We're going to be reading today from the book of Acts, chapter 28. Acts 28. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. In verse 1. When you have it, say praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. The book of Acts, chapter 28, and verse number 1. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one. Because of the present rain, and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, who, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he, speaking of Paul, shook off the beast into the fire. What did, where did he shake the beast off into? The fire. The fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have been swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, <laughs> I love this phrase, they changed their minds and said, that he was a God. Initially, when he was stung, they said he was a murderer and he should get swollen and fall down suddenly. But after a great while, they looked, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Praise God. I want to talk for just a few moments today. Let's build a fire. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, let's build a fire. Let's build a fire. Father God, today we stand in your presence. And we are so thankful for your goodness. Bless us tonight, today, Lord God, as we yield to your word. And God, help us to come to a conclusion that I'm going to build a fire in my life. Praise God. And see what God will do. Bless us today, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. You may be seated in his name. Praise the name of the Lord, God. They were crossing the sea in a prison ship. Paul and the other prisoners, perhaps there were some other murderers on this ship. This ship was a known prison vessel, taking individuals, taking prisoners on their way to prison. And during the course of the journey, the weather turned very sour. The winds blew, the rain fell, and the waves beat upon the side of the ship. And in the midst of this, they, the crew and the passengers got a little freaked out because of the storm. This prison ship was being rocked 
by a storm. How many in this house today? Let me ask, and I just want to see a, 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 a response by your hands. How many of you have been through a storm recently? There's just, there's some things that are unexplainable. Well, go ahead and keep your hands up. How many of you have been tossed back and forth and you, you, you wanted things to calm down a little bit? Some of you put your hands up. Sometimes God can take our storms. I am destined for prison house. to be incarcerated. But to the realm of his spirit, God will use my storms to change my final destination. Someone needs to praise God here today. The word of God says all things work together for good. If you believe that, say praise the Lord. The next time you're going through the midst of a storm, you need to put on your praise shoes and give God a holler of praise because this praise that you're going through, seemingly God's going to change some things in your life. God's going to use your storms to change the course of your life. All things are blessed of God. Come on, somebody praise God. You've been through a storm recently. Why don't you just stand and give God some praise? Because God used that storm. God used that storm to change your destination. Where the devil had you going, when you were destined to come, God raised up a storm to turn it around. What Satan meant for bad, God can turn it around and mean for good. When you are a child of God, God's hands are on you. And yes, it rains upon the just and the unjust. Yes, there's going to be storms in our life. But as a child of God, God has ordained these storms for my blessing. I'm so glad today I'm a child of God. Because it rains and storms upon the just and the unjust. But the difference between the just and the unjust, when my storms come as a child of God, God simply using that storm to change. As a child of God, I can praise God when the rain comes. Because I know this is a God-ordained storm. He's going to use this to keep me out of the prison house. He's going to use this to change the course of my life. Come on, devil, send another storm. Come on, devil, send me another one. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, Satan, give me another storm. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, thank God for the storms of my life. That old farmer that had that old donkey. His old donkey fell into that well that was in it. And then the old farmer came to the edge of that well and he looked down into the bottom of that well. And that farmer recognized, I don't have the strength myself to get that donkey out of, the, out of that well. I can't do it by myself. I'm not strong enough. I don't have the right tools. What am I going to do with that dumb donkey at the bottom of that well? Well, I can't pull him up. I might as well just bury him. He's an old donkey anyway. And that farmer, that old farmer got his old shovel and he began to shovel some old dirt on that donkey. 
Anybody ever felt like life just shoveling dirt on your back? Yes. It's like, anybody ever felt like life is just so overwhelming, it's going to destroy you and kill you? Yes. Have you ever felt like everybody's just turned their back on you? Has everybody ever, have you ever felt like people have just given up on you? That, that second full of dirt, it's sitting on the back of that donkey. That donkey says, I'm going to have to do something or I'm going to die. You ever felt your back against the wall and you got to do something or die? Come on, yes. So what the, what the farmer meant is, I'm going to kill that donkey. I'm just going to put him out of his miseries. I, I, I can't get him out. He's stuck. The 
And the more he stalked down, and the more he stalked down, the higher he went. Yes, Next time you're on your job, and your supervisor.
by the time that de devil stopped throwing the dirt on the donkey, that donkey stepped out of that realm. And you know what happened to that farmer? He changed his mind. Yes, yes, yes. The devil's going to hit you with everything he's got, but you stay faithful and calm. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to be somebody that the devil's trying to destroy, but after the devil watches me a little while, I want to change his mind. Yes. We have any mind changers in this house today? Let me tell you something. If you don't change the devil's mind, first of all, you got to change your own mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so... I know it's fr 
more say now. I know you're worried right now. But Paul said to these that were confused. Paul said, fellas, fellas, fellas. Come on, come on, one second. This storm. You hold on and watch. Paul to these unbelievers said, hold on and watch what my God, my God is going to show you something. Child of God, you need to go to your job tomorrow. You need to go to your places of employment. And everybody's freaking out. You need to say, say, folks, watch out. Watch what my God.
color. And Paul, Bible says, Paul, in the midst of this, the sails coming down, the cargo going overboard, Paul decided it was time for a Walker Jr. meal. He just started eating. <laughs> Hallelujah. And finally, because of their lack of belief, Paul says, listen guys, stay in the ship. Some were jumping overboard. Paul said, hey guys, just stay in the ship. The wind continued to blow and beat upon that ship. Ultimately, it was destroyed. The Bible says very quickly, some of them just held on to pieces of the ship. Praise God. I read Acts 27, and you can see the situation with the storm. But finally, 270 of them, everyone that's on the ship, make it safely to land. 270 people on the ship, and just as Paul said, not a one of them died. The ship was destroyed. But the man of God said, if you got to, just hold on a piece of the piece of water. Sometimes it looks like the church is going under. But I'm preaching to you, just hold on. Not the ability, but just hold on. Your co-workers going to say, give up on God. I'm not going to give up on God because God's never given up on me. Sometimes it looks like there's no way out. Hold on. After three days of dark, wind, and rain, the ship was destroyed, and 270 men make it to the beach alive. It's cold. It's rainy. And the natives on that island, they start a little far. And Paul wasn't lazy. Paul decided if they're going to be about their business, I might as well get involved as well. Sometimes too many of us sit back and we want others to light our fires for us. Sometimes we want others to feed us. The man of God said, save yourself from this untoward. There's some things that you've got to take responsibility for. Someone shout praise the Lord. Can God do anything? Can you do anything in God? We need to do it. So Paul said, although I was shipwrecked and I'm wet and I'm cold and I'm hungry, I still have a role to play. I still have a job to do. I'm not going to let the natives take care of me. God's given me two good hands and two good feet. I'm going to get busy about my own safety and security. There you go. Thank you. So Paul just wanders through the wilderness. Amen. And he, he, he finds some old sticks. And Paul takes them to where the fire is burning. You got to see it. Elder Rainer. And then all the sticks that Paul found, he let go into the fire. And when he let go of the wood, there was an old scorpion holding on to his hand. This was the same dude on the ship that said, chill out, calm down, God's got it in control. And because he went through the ship, when the old viper was on his hand, he just, God's got my back. He has my back yesterday. He's got my back today. Hallelujah. David said, I go fight Goliath. But David, you're too young. But we'll, we'll forget about that because God helped me with the lion and the bear. And because God helped me with the lion and the bear, I can destroy the lion. Listen, don't remove the old landmarks. The battles that you fought yesterday, your trials of yesterday, they're preparing you for the trials of the day. Get 
can't freak them out. God's brought me too far. I've come through too many storms in the past. This new problem is not a problem in God. And the Bible says he shook it off into the fire in Jesus' name. So when you need to walk into your homes today, in Jesus' name. You need to walk into the jobs tomorrow, in Jesus' name. You need to walk into the hospital, in Jesus' name. You need to walk into the courthouse, in Jesus' name. I'm a child of God. 
I'm not one just on Sunday, and then I can act devilish on Monday because you trouble me. No, no, no. I live holy on Sunday. I live holy on Monday. I live holy on Thursday. No, no, there's others out there. There's others out there. You know? That ain't me. You got the wrong individual. I'm a Christian. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Mercy, I've got to close. That's awesome. That's so awesome. They built the fire. The serpent came. The serpent was destroyed. The fire did two things. Turn to your neighbor and say, the fire did two things. The fire did two things. Anytime you go through the flames, it does two things for your soul. The fire does two things. It reveals what is hidden. And it destroys the serpent. The fire doing does two things. I was gonna say the fire does two things. Fire does two things. It reveals what's hidden and it destroys the work of the enemy. Let's stand to our feet today. Let's stand today. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, and I've got to close, and I'll close with this. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a, and it sat upon each of, and they were all filled with the, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them. Throughout the Word of God, I have it, but I don't have time to show it. Throughout the Word of God, the Spirit of God is represented by fire. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. It's represented by fire. The Bible talks in the Old Testament about a refiner's fire. When I go through the refiner's fire, I shall come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. You're in this house today. I'm preaching to you that you need to build a fire with the power of the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost, when it comes inside of you, will that fire that falls from heaven, the Holy Ghost will do two things for your life. It will reveal who you are. And it will destroy the work of the serpent. When I get the Holy Ghost in Elder Moody, it reveals who I am. And also, when the devil comes against me, if, I, if I've got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, I have the ability to stomp on Satan's head. I'm asking all that come to make your way to this altar today, come today, and let God complete a work in you. Somebody in this house today, you've been frustrated by the storms of life, I'm asking you to come today. Hallelujah. Some folks here, people have been shoveling dirt on you your entire life. Why don't you come today? Some of you are here today, your teachers, your co-workers, your mom, your dad, your children told you you're no good and good for nothing. Why don't you come today? Today's your day of salvation. Because the fire reveals who you are and the fire also destroys the work of the wicked one. Praise